Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, good to be with you. Uh, we are live here on Facebook on this Tuesday morning, the 8th of June. Uh, good to be with you this morning. Hopefully, uh, all will go smooth with this as we uh, try to just continue our our work through the book of 2 Corinthians. Um, I know we didn't uh, miss a few of you on Thursday. We're just going to do Tuesday, Wednesday during the summer months. Uh, just trying to... Um, you know, take it down just a tad. Uh, so good morning, Joe. Uh, Lou, good to be with you. Hopefully you're on your computer and it's all is working well. Um, there's Birdie. Nice to have you, Birdie. Uh, I got a few others on there as well. And some folks on the phone. Hopefully Judy and Frida. You guys are able to hear me. Morning, Michelle. Good to be with you this morning. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Hey Joyce, good to see you. Uh, nice to nice to have you with us this morning. Uh, how is Keith doing? Uh, wondering just how Keith is doing. Morning Sue. Um, well, some good words this morning. Um, we'll get going here. Some good words uh, from our <clears throat> our readings. Um, I don't know. It seems like uh, maybe you've noticed it. Um, Maybe you've experienced some of it in the last few months. A little bit of stress and anxiety uh, in, in your life. Uh, and from that stress and anxiety comes worry. Uh, and when we're worried, we tend to focus inward uh, instead of upward and outward. Um, that's just kind of how the pattern works. At, at least it does in my life. Uh, when we're when we're worried, when we're anxious, we start to worry, and when we worry, we focus in, focus inward instead of upward and outward, and our life gets out of balance. And we've talked about this before: the kind of life that Jesus lived, that that balanced life, that up in and out kind of life, up with the Father, in with other believers, and out uh, out to those who are are far from Jesus or don't know Jesus or are detached from Jesus. <clears throat> and when we're living in that balance up with God, in with other believers, out to the world, uh, worry starts to go away. Um, we start living the way that God created us to live, the, what we call the empowered life, the life that, that, that the Holy Spirit has, has won for us. But things get in the way, stressors get in the way, anxiety gets in the way, we get in the way, <laughs> and we start to worry, and then we pull inward, and we, we don't live up, in, and out. And I mean, some of the, the, the forced uh, time of this pandemic has caused us to draw more inward. Uh, we haven't been able to join together with other believers. We haven't been able to get out uh, with unbelievers. And so uh, there's this focus inward. And so um, interesting, our verses for today really kind of give us a solution to, to that. Uh, and our first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 60, verse 17. Uh, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 17, and it says, The Lord said, now, you know, it's one of those things, when the Lord says it, uh, we should listen. Uh, the Lord said. You know, uh, that's a powerful thing. Um, and, and we should take notice of that and actually, uh, actually listen. So the Lord uh, um the Lord said, I will appoint peace as your overseer and righteousness as your taskmaster. Now that may seem negative as you first hear those words. Uh, I will appoint, appoint peace as your overseer and righteousness as your taskmaster. We don't really want anyone as our taskmaster, so we want ourselves as a taskmaster. But the Lord said, I will appoint I will make righteousness your taskmaster. So whatever we do, what is our task for today? It is to do what God asks us to do. If we boil that down, uh, it's to love God and to love our, our neighbor. And, um, he, and when we start living that way in righteousness, that's when peace can be our overseer. See, when we live in the way that God has called us to live, uh, we can experience the life that God wants for us. I will appoint peace as your overseer. I mean, take that in this morning. God says, I'm going to give you peace. 
I want you to have peace in your life, not anxiety, not worry. And because you have peace, it's going to show in your life the way that you live. It's almost like I'm going to give you peace so that you live the right way, but then in living the right way, we get peace. It's kind of this circle, if you will, um, that brings about refreshment, which brings about uh, the empowered life uh, that God wants for us. Uh, in, Paul, in Romans, Paul says this, the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. You see, when we are living in this kingdom that Christ has come, the kingdom of God is near, Jesus said, repent and believe the good news, uh, that's when we can know righteousness and peace and, and joy. He brings it, the Holy Spirit brings it into our lives. And that's really a great word for us this morning, that God says, I'll appoint this peace as your overseer and righteousness as your taskmaster. And these are the things that are going to control and lead us uh, today. And when we allow that to happen, guess what starts to happen? The worry turns and diminishes, and so then the anxiety and the stress that comes along with that worry. Uh, God's in control. When we're up in our relationship with him, we can trust in him in all circumstances. When we're encouraged by other believers and together with other believers, we can experience that so that we can go out into, uh, out into the world. Well, Paul, as we turn to 2 Corinthians today, is now dealing with a stressful, anxious situation. Um, so the, the church, uh, I think there's some instigators within the church, some alligators as they're called, who are now questioning Paul's authority to, to speak to, to them. Um, and so Paul is, is trying to defend himself here in this section of Scripture. But really what he's doing is saying, you know, all this questioning, all this stress and anxiety is, is keeping us from doing what God has called us to do. Uh, being people who are, uh, have been appointed peace as our overseer and righteousness as our taskmaster. We're, we're missing that out. We're missing out on that. And we're not living as God would have us to live. And so uh, Paul defends himself here in, these, in this section of Scripture. But he also encourages the church to get on with the business of the church that, that they have been called to do. And I think we can, uh, we can apply some of that to us today. Um, you know, we, we need to move on. We need to get about the business that God has given to us as, as the church. Uh, we're moving out of COVID. We need to come together uh, and get behind our mission of people following Jesus together so our neighbors the next generation uh, can experience this life-changing love. It's not easy, stressful, but when we're living, letting peace be our overseer and righteousness, our taskmaster, uh, we can live the life that God wants for us. So let me read these words. It's from 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 10, 2 Corinthians 10, 7 through 18. 2 Corinthians 10, 7 through 18. Paul writes this, You stare and stare at the obvious, but you can't see the forest for the trees. If you're looking for a clear example of someone on Christ's side, why do you so quickly cut me out? Believe me, I'm quite sure of my standing with Christ. You may think I overstate the authority he gave me, but I am not backing off. Every bit of my commitment is for the purpose of building you up, after all, not tearing you down. And what's this talk about me bullying you with my letters? His letters are brawny and potent, but in person he's a weak, weakling and mumbles when he talks. Such talk won't survive scrutiny. What we write when away, we do when present. We're the exact same people, absent or present, in letter or in person. We're not, understand, putting ourselves in a league with those who boast that they're our superiors. We wouldn't dare do that. But in all this comparing and grading and competing, they quite miss the point. We aren't making outrageous claims here. We're sticking to the limits of what God has set for us. 
But there can be no question that those limits reach to you and include you. We're not moving into someone else's territory. We were already there with you, weren't we? We were the first ones to get there with the message of Christ, right? So how can there be any question of overstepping our bounds by writing or visiting you? We're not bargaining. We're not barging in on the rightful work of others, interfering with their ministries, demanding a place in the sun with them. What we're hoping for is that your lives grow in faith. You'll play a part within our expanding work. And we'll all still be within the limits God set, sets as we proclaim the message in countries beyond Corinth. But we have no intention of moving in on what others have done or taking credit for it. If you want to claim credit, claim it for God. What you say about yourself means nothing in God's work. It's what God says about you that makes the difference. Well, a couple of things here as I read that this morning. Uh, obviously, Paul's dealing with a stressful situation. He's trying to bring the gospel. you got people who are usurping that, uh, saying that his, his authority is not from Christ, that he just wants credit for what's happening there. He wants his, his place in the sun, um, all these kinds of things. And Paul says, we're just doing what, what we've been called to do. Uh, and it's interesting to me that, that Paul here really uh, takes on what I would say uh, peace as his overseer. And he wants to do the right thing, righteousness as his taskmaster. And that's really what we're called to do. Um, called to do what God calls us to do. And, and recognizing our place. It's not what we do that makes us sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. It's what God has done for us. For us. Paul goes back to that message of grace again. We are who we are because of what Christ has done for us. And as a result of that, we allow righteousness to be our taskmaster. We can live in the peace uh, and the certainty of our identity found in Christ Jesus. And no matter what we may have to deal with, uh, we can be sure and certain we are his sons and daughters. We are marked in as his own in the waters of holy baptism. And he's got our back. And that's what Paul is saying here. Let's get on with the, the business of what we've been called to do. Let, let's not just go through the motions. Let's not be pointing fingers. Let's not exclude others, all that kind of stuff. Let's get about the business that we've been called to do. And it's hard now. It's getting harder and harder, I'm discovering. Uh, but our light and momentary troubles um, can't even compare with what God has in store for us his people and he wants all people to experience that, that empowered life so let's uh let's grow in our faith let's let's play a part in expanding uh the work right uh, let's reach out to those who don't know jesus and, and share this wonderful gospel gospel message that's letting that's letting uh, righteousness be our taskmaster and when we do that uh, the peace will, will overflow in our lives um, so uh, good words this morning hold on to that hold on to that I appoint peace as your overseer and righteousness as your taskmaster even when we don't know what the days ahead bring we know that uh, God is in control today we pray a couple of prayers here um, uh, good news obviously uh, Joyce said that uh, Keith went back to work last week so we're grateful for that uh, recovered from his the COVID and just pray for healing for him complete uh, we pray for John Vivian a sheriff's son car accident is recovering from that Ashley a friend of Jen Anderson who is dealing with brain issues brain bleeds um, struggling uh, so we pray for her uh, for Jeff Reininger uh, hospitalized with food poisoning um, he's been in the hospital three days now so uh, really dealing with that I just pray uh, healing and restoration for him. Uh, Joe Grish, praying for him with his heart uh, that he would uh, be able to get those tests and get that checked out and that there would be good news. We pray for our vacation Bible school. Um, 
as we get ready for that our, and our BELC date camp uh, as that's going on now. Uh, continue to do the work here. Uh, we're grateful that things are starting to open up and look forward uh, to what that could mean for, for us this weekend. Um, I'll have more details on that for you tomorrow. Um, I think that's what I've got for now. Uh, let, me, let me pray. Father, uh, we come to you today and we're just grateful for uh, the peace that you, you give to us, uh, that, that it can oversee our lives. Um, a peace that comes from knowing who we are, um, that we are yours, and that nothing in all of creation can separate us from the love that you have for us in your Son, Christ Jesus. It's easy to forget that amid the stress and anxiety, Lord, uh, to focus inward instead of upward and outward, um, cutting ourselves off from our fellow believers, those that we need in our lives. Um, and so, Lord, we are better together, and we, we need that so that we can live these lives of righteousness, that, that the righteousness can be our taskmaster. And we want that today, Lord. We want to see your kingdom expand. We want to be people who are following Jesus more and, and more. Um, and just having you take over our lives, Lord, um, and, and um, moving, moving out with this gospel, uh, this good news. Uh, Lord, we know that you, you, you want what's good for us, um, and so we trust in you in that. A uh, prayer of thanksgiving for, for Keith, who went back to work last week, uh, recovering from his COVID uh, illness, and just we're grateful for that. We just continue to watch over him and his family. We lift up to you, Lord, to today, John, as he's recovering from a car accident. We pray for Ashley and her, her, her head issues, uh, for Jeff Reiniger, in food poisoning, Joe with his heart. And we thank you for the kids who are here at our uh, summer camp with our early learning center. Uh, may we continue to reach out to these families, Lord, and know that we care about them and that you care about them. And we pray for our BBS as we continue to prepare for that. And um, just as we begin to move forward, as we transition out of this time, uh, COVID time, into uh, the new day before us, and we're excited about that, Lord, and we're thankful for that. Um, just keep us on focus and, and, and what we really seek to be about, uh, living as your people, following Jesus together. Uh, Lord, bless the day that you've given us. Uh, we thank you for the ascension and look forward to the rain. Uh, and just uh, also pray, uh, just pray, it's kind of kind of my heart now for our, our, our city, uh, Lord, uh, there's another weekend of just violence and killing, senseless killing. Um, it may seem like a world away, uh, and yet these are our neighbors, uh, Lord. And just the pain and the grief and the, uh, just the brokenness um, that is so inundating in so many lives. And we just pray, uh, Lord, for your, your hand of, of peace uh, upon these, these communities. Uh, for those who are in gangs, Lord, may they find freedom from that uh, and find real uh, community in you, uh, the one who longs to be in relationship with all people. Um, things of this world lead us down a dead end path. Uh, I just pray for, for freedom for those who are held captive in, in that kind of lifestyle. Uh, Lord, we pray this now in Jesus' name. Uh, amen. All right, you guys have a good day. Good to be with you uh, all. Uh, and um, look forward to seeing you again uh, tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Uh,